My brother, if you'd like to learn how to get your wife to have sex with you again or revive the romance in your relationship, this is the video for you. In fact, we're lifting a lot of the concepts out of the Soul Seducer program. If you want to become a soul seducer so that you can seduce your wife with a seductive life, check out the link in the description below. You'll learn all about it. So let's get started. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. Boundaries. It's the first place we always take guys. Why? Because most guys are so conflict averse they can't even tell their wife no, let alone hold a fucking boundary. And so boundaries aren't like, hey honey, I don't like it when you do this. And then just like, she never does anything. She never does anything about it. It's like, I can't hold boundaries. It's like, yeah, because you got no backbone and you were not bringing a collision to her. You're not giving her this like ultimatum of, hey, this needs to happen or this consequence will happen. It's the same thing with your kids. Right? Your kids aren't going to take you seriously if there's no consequence. Say, hey, I need you to clean your room. And then your kid just walks around and ignores you. Hey, I'm talking to you. I need you to clean your room. And they just act like you don't even exist. And you're like, Lucas, I told you to clean your room. And you're not taking me seriously. Right? That's usually how I do it. I don't tell kids that they're not listening. I tell them, you're not taking me seriously, which means you better take me seriously. So you're not taking me seriously. So this is what's going to happen. You don't have to clean your room, but you're not going to get screen time today. And if you don't clean your room tomorrow, you're not going to get screen time that day. And in fact, I'm fine with you just never having screen time again. So you probably should go clean your room. Right? There's a clear defin defining point. It's a discrete event that if this thing doesn't happen, this other thing happens. And so for a lot of guys, they're like, I can't do that. What am I going to tell my wife I'm going to leave her? It's like, yeah, but you don't have to give her time and attention. A lot of times, the guy doesn't even really say it with conviction, so she doesn't take him seriously at all. And if you find yourself in a situation with your wife where you can't even exude one boundary because she loses her mind and she gets really upset, usually it spins him into getting upset too and to go into this long fight. And it's a long fight because of one reason. She doesn't want to do the thing, so what she's doing is she's emotionally wearing you down until you just finally give up. And what she'll do is she'll deflect to the thing and start accusing you of all the things that you're not doing. She can start showing that you're awful. And if she can show that you're awful and then you agree with it, and you're like, well, in comparison, who am I going to tell her? I can't even do this thing. And I'm going to tell her this thing here. And so most guys don't know how to have the conflict with their woman. And so there's no boundaries. And she wears him down. And he's like, you know what? It's easier just to not deal with it. And so most guys aren't willing to walk away. They're not willing to actually have a collision. They're not willing to actually deal with the boundary issue. And so eventually it erodes into this place where she doesn't respect him at all. And if your woman can't respect you and she doesn't think you have authority in the relationship, she will not find you attractive and she will decide that, you know what, I don't want to be with this guy or I don't want to sleep with him. And so the first thing is we have to establish your own boundaries and your own personal power and your own personal authority. Not authority over her, but your own personal authority and your own sovereign dominion in your own domain. Which leads to number two, which is dominant behavior. I'm not saying dominate your wife. Don't dominate your wife unless that's the thing that she likes. That's what turns her on and you've had a discussion about it. What I mean is dominant behavior. In other words, I'm going to go do the shit I want to do. I'm not going to ask permission. I'm just going to go and do it. Now, with that being said, I'm not saying you should forget your family. I'm not saying you should forget your responsibilities and just be this guy in the wind who does whatever the fuck he wants. You want to have dominant behavior. Like, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to operate my life. I'm not going to ask permission for how I want to operate my life. This is how I want to operate my life. And I only, I'm only accountable to myself. Now, with that being said, obviously I have children. And you care about them too. So there's a balance with this. You're not going to give up all your responsibilities for this. You have responsibilities as a father and as a husband. But at the same time, you do what you want and you do it how you want to do it. Most guys aren't able to do that. They're too worried about what their wife's going to think of them. They're too worried about looking like a bad guy. They're too worried about like the nagging or anything else that they don't have any dominion or agency over their own time and energy. And so with you in a situation like this, you have to start exerting dominant behavior. And what do you mean by that, Ed? Like, what do you mean by dominant behavior? Well, let's take example for going out on a date night. On a date night, you're just going to say, hey, let's go to this place. And she'll say, well, I don't really want to go there. Like, okay, well, where do you want to go? And see, so this is a dominant at this point. And what he's doing is he's just going wherever she wants to go. He's not saying what's going to happen. A guy who knows how to actually seduce his wife and move things forward, he's going to find out the thing that she likes and the thing that he likes as well and say, hey, I got a surprise for you tonight. We're going to go here, and I'd like to see you wear this while we go there. And then she'll say, oh, it's a surprise and I have to wear this. That gives her a clue about where you're going. And then you as a dominant man will have a couple of other things that are going to happen afterwards. And what you do is you move forward with certainty and conviction. You don't necessarily ask permission every step of the way. And I'm not talking about games like consent. I'm not talking about consent. I'm talking about you as a man operating in your dominion with your wife, knowing that you should move things forward as you should. And so dominant behavior means we're going to go move forward with certainty and conviction. 
knowing and keeping, safeguarding what you know she is already wanting, knowing how she is and how she operates. And so you can do this with certainty and conviction because you know her well enough. And so you do this. The problem is that most guys don't have certainty and conviction. So then he does do this one time. She tests him. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. He's like, well, I tried it, and it didn't work. Yeah, because you've been, you've been following this up with a bunch of weak-ass behavior. Now you're going to do this 180 and change like this tonight, and she's going to test it. She's not going to give up the crown of power that easily. And so women will test you for two different reasons. One, are you a liar? And this is what she's testing you on. Are you a liar? And two, I need help regulating emotionally. I'm feeling scared. And so this is the one where she's going to say, you're a liar. Because you're a liar, you're just going to fold. Though, you say, no, we're going to go. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be a good time. You don't have to go. It's fine. I'm not going to make you go, but I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to be disappointed if you don't go. And your energy coming at her in this way, energy bringing her and inviting her into this place with this dominant energy is going to make all the fucking difference. Cindy Lauper had it right. Girls just want to have fun. And so guys forget that the whole point that he's in a relationship with this woman is because he's there to play. He's there to have a good time. I mean, that's why you got with her to begin with, right? You thought she was hot. You had fun with her. You had great sex. And so you're in this relationship with your wife. You forgot how to play. And so part of this game is this invitation to play, this open invitation to play. Now, she may not be receptive to it, but you can't let that bother you. In fact, you love your life and you love moving forward. You love having a good time. So again, when you approach your wife, invite her to play. Grab her hand, spin her around, give her a dip, give her a kiss, start dancing with her, start doing anything that would be a playful thing. Start teasing her, being a little bit cheeky, messing with her. Get her to open up with you in this invitation to play, showing her like, hey, I'm here to play with you. Do you want to play? Because make no fucking mistake, if you're with me and you're my wife, we're here to play. All that heavy shit can go over here and be sidebar conversation. But when you're with me, you're here to play. And we're going to have a great fucking time doing it. And see this right here? This attitude is also dominant behavior. If you're with me, we're here to play. This is the game. This is why we're together. We're not here to stress about shit all the time. We're here to play. Now, all that stuff that happens in our life comes on a backbone of our play and the assertiveness that you are, you're bringing to the relationship. See, your dominant behavior, your assertiveness also creates a context and container with which you can relax and actually play. Because if shit's taken care of, if shit is being handled, then she can actually uh, sit back and relax with you. Which brings me to my next point. You should be exuding happiness and a carefree attitude. In other words, if you approach your wife for play and she's upset about you and she's like, yeah, I don't want to do this. Get away from me. You're like, that's fine, but I'm coming back later. And just have this attitude of like, you can't touch me. You can't hurt me. I'm going to have fun. Whether you're here or not, my life is fucking awesome. You as a man need to be able to exude this energy and be able to push everything out and isolate and keep yourself in this happy place. Your ability to maintain your own emotional self-control and your own happy emotional center is absolutely fucking key. If you can't do this and she's able to rail on you and she pulls you down into her pit, you're not the stable rock of the family. You shouldn't allow anybody to do this to you. Don't let anybody put you in a bad mood. You need to be able to compartmentalize appropriately so that you can maintain your context and container for your happy life. Then from this context and container of your happy life, you're going to create a seductive lifestyle. In other words, you're gonna start doing shit that makes you happy. You're gonna start going and doing things that you love. You're gonna do things that make your life absolutely on fucking fire. Like going to the gym, making sure you're eating right so that your body looks good, dressing well, start making more money, start another business, anything that gives you power and conviction and purpose in your life. Maybe you gotta start volunteering somewhere, maybe you do public speaking, something that gets you out of your comfort zone, something that makes you fearful, but yes, you did it anyway so that you have confidence on the other side of it. And through all this, you have a competence to life and you become secure as a man. When you start creating a seductive lifestyle, new friends, new interests, new everything, then she's gonna say, what the fuck's going on with this guy? This isn't the husband that I was sitting around watching Netflix every fucking night getting fucking fat on beer. This is a different kind of guy. How is he operating differently? She's going to start seeing you controlling your life, dominate behavior, right? Dominating your life. You're not dominating your wife, but you're dominating your life. And from this, she's going to say, this guy has tapped into a power I have not ever seen. And she's going to get curious. And then she's going to pull the tests out. One, are you a fucking liar? And two, I'm getting a little insecure because you're getting a little ahead of me and I don't know what to do about it, so I gotta slow your fucking ass down. And so she'll try to sabotage you because she's scared. And so when she's scared, you just say, hey, you're good with me. I want you here. Come be with me in my life. Let's go to this new promised land. We had to leave that land to get to this new place. Do you want to join me here? And when you're able to do this with certainty and conviction, she will chill out and then she'll be faced with a decision. 
can I actually do this and do I want to do it? Because now she's having to face her own fears, anxieties, and insecurities. And so she'll test you. Are you a liar? And I'm afraid. I don't know if I can do this. And so you cannot allow that to stop you. You cannot fall into her victim frame. You have to keep pressing forward and dominating your own life. And again, she's going to get stressed out. And so you have to create the context and container that she's safe with you. Like, it's okay. I understand. You're afraid. You're afraid it might leave you. You're afraid things are going to change. You're afraid of any kind of things that can happen, but you are okay with me. If there's one thing I'm certain about, I'm certain that I want to do it with you. And so I want you to join me in this new place, this happy, fun place where we get to play a lot. And yes, we work hard, but we also play hard as well. And so you have to create this place where she can feel safe in that, emotional safety. If she doesn't feel emotionally safe with you, she's going to shut down and be quiet and disappear. Or she'll battle with you and collide with you, and you'll have to break through that, either through making her cry or getting her so angry she finally tells you the fucking truth. And nobody wants to go down that road. That's a spicy situation that you really shouldn't do unless you really know what the fuck you're doing. And so you want to get her to open up. And in this place, you're happy, go lucky. You have these conversations, these critical conversations to say, hey, what's going on with you? And sometimes you have to dig. Sometimes you dig to get in there. But if you can keep digging, again, you're being the one who is creating a context and container for what this relationship is supposed to be because you've done all these things so far, she will eventually open up. And we've got a few techniques specifically in the Soul Seducer program that take a long time to get through. But generally speaking, keep asking her questions till she opens up. You don't need fucking sex. From your wife, don't look at your wife as that is her duty for you. I mean, yes, that is part of the deal for having a marriage. She has sex with you a lot, you give her time and attention, and this is kind of the thing. And so when the woman stops having sex with you, you feel like it's a massive bait and switch. Or when your wife gains a ton of weight, and you're like, hey, this wasn't the deal, this isn't what I wanted. And guys feel trapped in this bait and switch, and they get trapped in this game of fat shaming and all this other stuff, and he falls into her victim frame. And so he feels like there's this bait and switch, but he can't say anything to her about it. He can't tell her it because he just ends up becoming the bad guy, and somehow all of her behavior is fucking justified because of her lack of dealing with her own emotional self-control. And so when he talks about this, she'll say and linchpin him by saying, hey, I don't feel safe when you tell me these things. I feel criticized, I feel unloved. And so what ends up happening, the guy can never have this collision with her, not in a way that actually changes things around And So you don't have that collision with her. What you do is you rise up and you get better and better and better. And part of this is you got to stop pulling on her for sex. Most guys look at sex as a pressure relief valve. Most guys look at sex as, hey, I need you to service me because I'm feeling horny. And guys look at intimacy only through the lens of sex. If I have sex with her, then I feel like I'm intimately connected to my wife, only to find out years later that, or not even years later, only to find out that she's only having sex with him just to get her off her fucking back. And so he's there doing the deed with her, but she's not into it. She doesn't care about it that much. And he feels awful and dirty even doing that, but he doesn't know what else to do because he just wants to be touched by his wife. And so for you, if you've created this situation where she decided she wasn't in the mood and then she pulled away from you and then you started pouting about it, saying, why don't you like me? Why aren't you attracted to me? And you keep railing on her over and over and over again, she's going to back up. She's going to retreat and she's going to shut down. And then you won't be able to have this conversation because every time you make a move for sex, now she feels under pressure. She's like, oh, if I don't do this, he's going to get upset. If I don't do this, he's not, I'm not going to give him what he wants. He's gonna... And so this turns her off. And a woman's sex only opens in a container of safety, in a container of desire, in the container of attractiveness, not in a container of duty. And so when you put her in a container of duty, you're putting her in a container of being a prostitute. This is your duty. Pay up. She doesn't want to be like that any more than you want her to be. But this is the, this is the situation you're creating for. This is why you've got to stop pulling on her for sex, at least for a while. At least for a while, to the connection with her is reestablished. The fun and intimacy and play and great conversations are reestablished, and then she will pull on you for it. And so, for most guys, they don't get this concept that the women are the pursuers in a relationship. The women are pursuers in the dating. They go after the guys that are the winners. But the problem is, you got a bunch of guys who don't get any action because they're not winners, and so the only option that they have is to pursue women. And what it ends up doing is it pushes her away because she's like, I don't really want you to begin with. Why are you pursuing me? He's like, maybe I could eventually win her over if I can prove how amazing I am. The thing is that his trying to prove how amazing he is to her is an approval-seeking behavior. If you were amazing, you'd just already fucking win, and she would notice you. And so part of this, as you heard me talk about earlier, is creating a seductive life by going out there and fucking winning. And so if you want to actually have your woman really lean into you, you start winning. 
and you start showing her that you don't need her for the sex. I'm not telling you to go out there and sleep with somebody else. I'm not telling you to go out there and cheat on your wife. I'm not telling you to go look at porn. I'm telling you to take sex off the table for you as your validation vehicle. And if you're looking at porn, if you're looking at prostitutes, you're not gonna be able to get out of this trap. You're gonna be stuck here and you're not gonna be able to repair it with your wife. And so you have to take sex off of this game of validation for you. And you're like, well, how am I gonna do that? I never got enough to begin with. I'm gonna tell you, brother, you'll never get enough. Sex is always something you're gonna desire. It's always gonna be this itch, this craving that you always want. The trick is you recontextualize what it is for you. If you take it off the table as your validation vehicle and you don't need sex as validation, all of a sudden you've got the power back in your hands. All of a sudden this is something she wants to do with you because there's no pressure. And it can be fun, it can be free, just like you always wanted. But until this game happens this way, you're still gonna be still begging for your wife in this sexless marriage. And the last thing, which is probably the most important one, is presence. Most guys aren't in the relationship to actually see the woman that's in front of them. He's there to try to get validation from her, to try to get sex from her, to try to get somebody to actually love and approve of him and to make him feel like a good boy like mommy does. He's not actually there being present, not needing anything from her and actually watching her and seeing how she is and how she operates, trying to get to know everything about her and how she really works. He's not doing that. In fact, most guys never do that. In fact, my wife, when I first started dating her and I was telling her, hey, I'd like to know everything about you. And I was present with her and I was looking her right in the eye and I could feel her, I could feel how she was feeling. It's the first time a man had ever done that. Why? Guys don't do it. Most people don't know how to be present. They're always thinking of the next thing to fucking say, the next response, the next witty thing to get the approval from their party that's watching them. And so this problem is here is a game of validation junkies. And so you're trying to get validation from your wife, your wife's trying to get something from you and you're just both trying to pull from each other and it's this take-take relationship and it gets out of balance because nobody really wants to give to a taker. And so what ends up happening is you're in this take-take relationship and so the game is, it's just like with money. How can I get as much as possible by giving as least amount? I want to get the cheapest price for the shit. And so you're not in a, a giving relationship. Givers give freely because they enjoy giving to their partner. And then oftentimes one partner doesn't play that game and they're like, well, that's cool. How do I give the person back less and less and less? Because I don't really care about him as much as I, he thinks I do. I only want him for his money and his favors and his security. I don't actually love the guy inside. So I'm gonna do the minimum possible. Maybe I'll have sex with him once every three months just to get them off my back. And so you have to flip the script on that game. You have to say, well, that's true, you can do that, that's fine, but you won't be in a marriage with me much longer. And so your ability to walk away is your power. And you should utilize it sparingly, like the pepper in a salad. Don't throw it everywhere and manipulate your wife into a fear cycle. It'd be unethical and well, you will fuck your marriage up and it'll never re recover from that. All right, my brother, as you can see, I am very passionate about this subject because I'm really fucking good at it and I'm very passionate about my guys because they get fucking results and it is amazing. Fucking love it. If you want to learn more about Soul Seducer program, the link is in the description below. Soul Seducer isn't for you and you need a cheaper option. We got the Betray to Badass book. This is the outline of the old Broken to Badass program. It's still very valid, it's still very powerful, and we've had over 3,500 guys go through that program and have just as many success stories. We don't have failures in that program, although we do occasionally have a guy who doesn't actually do the work, which, you know, that's on him, and it's on, it's, it's, hell, it's his life. We do everything we can to try to convince him otherwise, but sometimes guys just get it in their head that they just can't fucking do it, and that is a fucking shame. Anyways, brother, if you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.